Hello, welcome to lesson 12. We are going to be learning about number lines, lines, and tally marks. We're going to go ahead and start about learning lines. And the very basics of geometry that most people know are points, which is simply a point, or if you like to call it a dot, and lines. Now, the key thing to remember about lines is that they have no beginning and no end. So we draw arrows to represent that. There's arrows here, I'm not sure how much you can see. But I have two arrows on both sides because with a line, it has no starting point and no ending point. It's kind of like God. So I'm gonna put right here that it is like God. And the way you can think of it is God has no beginning and no end. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Lines represent the same thing. Now with line segments, we do have a beginning and an end. So line segments, we draw points or dots at the very end of the line segment to represent the starting point and the ending point. Now the way that you can remember line segments is it's like our life on Earth. We're born on Earth. We die on earth. We have a beginning and an end to our lives here on earth. So I'm going to put in parentheses here. Life on earth. Okay. The last one that we have is a ray. A ray has a starting point but no ending point. Now I drew this ray with my starting point over here on the left. However, you can actually have it vice versa. I can put my starting point here and draw it with no end. It doesn't matter which side your starting point is at. It is called a ray. Now a ray is like our life as a Christian. We're born again in Christ and we are a new creation, and we get to live for all eternity with God. So I'm going to put life as a Christian. Overlapping a little bit, but it says life as a Christian. All right, so direction of the lines, line segments, and rays do make a difference as well. We need to know about the direction that the lines are pointing or headed or how they are laid out. So we have horizontal and vertical, which all of you should know or have maybe learned at some point. Horizontal, you think of horizon. I usually think of Lion King when you have Mufasa and Simba sitting out on the cliff and... Mufasa tells Simba to look onto the horizon. Well, the horizon is horizontal. It's where you usually have, you see your sky, you meet the land. Or it's where you see those two meet. The horizon is horizontal. Then we also have vertical. Vertical is straight up and down. So this would be a vertical line, just like this, if it were straight. There we go. And then we have oblique. Oblique is, in terms how you would probably think of it, is diagonal, but we do want to remember it as being oblique. That's going to be our correct vocabulary term that we are using. Oblique is facing any other direction besides vertical or horizontal. So it can be oblique in any which direction. If it's not completely horizontal or vertical, it is oblique. All right, then the next thing we are going to look at is number lines. Now, number lines you are very familiar with already. We have number lines and keyword line. It can continue on and on forever. We have our arrows at the end to represent. Now, this number line, I have zero, and I have some positive numbers, and I also have negative numbers. Negative numbers are numbers that go before zero which is negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. It continues so on and so on, so forth. We won't be dealing with negative numbers so much at the beginning of this year until maybe the spring. 
So we have negative numbers on this number line, and also the key thing to remember with number lines is that we have unit segments. Now we know what a segment is, it has a beginning and an end. So on our number line, our unit segments are simply the space between every number. So the space between negative 2 and negative 1 is one unit segment. The space between negative 1 and 0, that's one unit segment. The space between 0 and 1, that's another unit segment. So altogether, this number line has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 unit segments. All right, now the next vocabulary slash concept, the vocabulary term that we're going to be learning about is tally marks. Now, it's not the tally marks with our discipline system, our demerits. These are tally marks that you would usually see when counting, maybe making a large record of counting. Use one tally mark. That's how you would make two tally marks. The pattern would continue until you get to your multiples of five. When you get to your multiples of five, I'm not sure how much you can see it, but when you get to your multiples of five, it is very important to do one, two, three, four. You cross over kind of like a gate or like a picket fence for our fifth tally mark. So then when we see these groups all together, whenever we look at that, I can say automatically that's five and I don't have to count each little hash mark. So then when we go to six, we just simply add one more next to it. Seven, we'd add another one next to it. Eight, another one next to it until we got to 10. Then we would have two sets of these. Okay, so that is important to remember. All right, now another vocabulary that we have is integers. Now integers are all, this number line includes all integers. Integers are all counting numbers, so counting numbers are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so on and so forth, and 0, because 0 is not a counting number, so it includes all counting numbers, 0, and negative numbers. So really every whole number, or every number that you can think of would be an integer, unless it would not include the decimals and fractions. All right, so we'll go ahead and go to example one. Example one says, gives me a number sequence that's counting by ones. I have five, four, three, and I'm going to write the next six terms of this sequence. I want you to go ahead and do that in your spirals. Okay, the next six terms of the sequence would be two, one, zero, then after zero, I go to negative one, negative two, get five, so I need one more. So it'd be negative three. So that would be my next six terms of the number sequence. All right, we're skipping example two and doing example three. Example three says how many unit segments, which we looked over here at the number line, how many unit segments are there from two to five? So we have this number line here, and we have two all the way to five, so I'm gonna count the spaces in between those two numbers. I have one, two, three, so my answer would be three, and I'm going to label, that is a requirement, unit segments, because that's what we are answering. All right, I know that was a lot for lesson 12, but we're going to go ahead and do an activity in class, creating the lines, line segments, rays, number lines, and tally marks. Thank you for listening.